Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about another form of passive transport called osmosis. In the transport across the membrane video, we covered passive transport, which include both diffusion and carrier-mediated transport, where materials are moving down their gradient, and active transport, where materials are moving up the gradient. And we had just introduced the concept of osmosis. This is another type of passive transport where the water is required to move across a semi-permeable membrane. Water is polar, so it can't move very well by itself across the membrane. However, we have lots of special water channels called aquaporins that allow water to cross the membrane. We have so many of these aquaporins that it makes it seem as if water can just flow across at will. In the body, water is a solvent. A solvent disrupts ionic bonds. We learned about that in the last video. All of the other stuff in the water, gases, ions, proteins, macromolecules, are the solute. I like to use the word stuff when I talk about solute, so you don't have to worry about remembering what solute means. It's just all the stuff that's in the solvent. So how does osmosis help us fix the concentrations of stuff in the body? Let's look at this special tube. It contains a solution of a solvent, water, which is the little blue dots, with some solute, or stuff, the purple dots. There is a semi-permeable membrane at the bottom in between the two arms. If we look at the osmolarity, or amount of solute in the solution on each side, you can see that there is less stuff on the left-hand side and more stuff on the right-hand side. So the concentrations on each side of the membrane are different. Remember, this is our definition of a gradient. A difference in concentration on one side of a membrane versus the other side of a membrane. You would expect if the purple dots could move, they would move down their gradient from the right towards the left, down their gradient. But what if they can't move because the membrane is not permeable to them? If the stuff can't move, it creates an osmotic force that will result in water moving towards the right, towards the area of greater solute concentration. This is what osmosis is. We're moving water from an area of low solute concentration, low stuff, to an area of high solute concentration, high stuff. Put more simply, if the stuff can't move, water follows the stuff. Over time, in this tube, you will observe that as the water moves towards the stuff, the level of water on the right will go up. We have now diluted the stuff on the right by adding water to it. And water has been removed from the area on the left. It's concentrated now. At some point, the concentration on both sides will be equal and there will no longer be any osmotic force. And this is what we call equilibrium. So this is very interesting in a tube, but how does this actually affect our cells? Remember from a few slides back that osmolarity is the amount of solute in a solution, kind of like the concentration. High osmolarity has more stuff, low osmolarity has less stuff. This becomes very important when we talk about the cell and the body fluids that cells sit in. When we talk about how this affects cells, we talk about tonicity. If the amount of stuff is the same on both sides of the membrane, we call that isotonic. There's no osmotic force causing water to go either direction because the concentration is equal inside and outside the cell. No force to make it move. However, if there is a difference if the stuff is at a greater concentration in solution, it is called hypertonic. If the stuff is at a lesser concentration, it's called hypotonic. Now you remember your medical terminology here. Hyper means over and hypo means under. So hypertonic has more stuff, hypotonic has less stuff. Because the stuff is generally not able to move across the plasma membrane, the water will move towards the stuff, 
to dilute the area of the greater concentration. In a hypertonic environment, the water will move out of a cell towards the stuff. In the case of a hypotonic environment, water will move into the cell towards where there's more stuff. It always moves to dilute that area where there's more stuff. Now, cells prefer isotonic solutions. That's why we don't inject pure water into someone's veins. Instead, we use an isotonic solution, such as normal saline, with a concentration of 0.9% NaCl. This keeps it so that there's no osmotic force, as the stuff on both sides of the plasma membrane is the same. This keeps our red blood cells shaped the way they're supposed to be shaped. If the cells are placed into a hypotonic solution, however, osmotic force will cause water to rush into the cell because there's more stuff in there. This actually can cause the cell to swell and perhaps even burst. If the cell is placed in a hypertonic solution where there's too much stuff outside, the osmotic force will cause water to rush out of the cell towards the stuff and the cell will shrink and crenate. Both of these situations are not good because they're not able to fulfill their primary objective, which is carrying oxygen, and they could get stuck in little capillaries throughout the body and cause little blood clots and blockages. That's it for today. See you in class.